storybook about the universe. So it was quite a challenging task. I had to explain 3,000 years of knowledge that we've acquired, which leads to our understanding of our place in the universe. So we live in a sort of special time. We understand where we came from. And we also can say something about where we're going. And I wanted to describe all of this knowledge at a level that anybody could understand. So I wrote it for my children to read. Um, and hopefully that means that anybody can pick up this book and read about the Big Bang, about the evolution, about life and the universe, and get something from it. So it's a story about the history and future of life in the universe. Definitely not. I wrote it not for my colleagues. <laughs> I hope they don't read it. <laughs> Thanks to my father, actually, he, he was a, just a forester and, and he used to take me out working in the woods every weekend when I was a teenager. He would question everything. Where do trees come from? How do they grow? How do trees get the, the water to the top of the leaves? And he would question where life came from and how the sun works. And we used to talk about this while we were working outside. And he would encourage me to, to learn about these topics and he encouraged me to go to university because he never had that opportunity. So I, I, I did, I went to university to learn about astrophysics and he inspired me to, to try and answer these complex questions. Some of them we, I could, some are still, there's a lot we don't know about the universe still. But then I wanted to put all this down in a little book as well, something, something you can leave behind because there's not much you can leave behind in this world. It's a strange thing about humans that they want to be remembered when they're dead. Although, that, I guess that's a little bit why religion is, is there. It gives people some sort of a hope that there's something after you die. But in reality, there's nothing. When you're dead, you just, that's it. Your brain switches off, all your memories decay and vanish, and it's all over. And you know, it's nice maybe to think you can leave something behind that your children can lead, other people can read. In the end, it'll turn to dust as well, and the sun's going to burn it up in about a billion years, so... <laughs> Nothing lasts forever. <laughs> Not even diamonds, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I love making music. I make sort of electronic dubstep type music, which is a bit unusual for a professor, but the students love it. <laughs> and it, it just empties your mind. You go into the studio and you're in a different environment making music and you know, it just switches off your brain and then it's relaxing. <laughs> and at the end you get something out of it and people like it, I like that. Oh.